Welcome to the chapter 3 of the React Quickly book. In this video, I will walk you through the timer project. Let's look at the structure. We have Bootstrap CSS, that's Twitter Bootstrap library for styling our components. Then I have this .wav file, which will sound an alarm when the timer is on, when the time has ended. And then I have index.html, which you look here. I included the bootstrap, and that's all for now. Then I downloaded react-dom file. I'm using version 0.14.2. Please use the same version. And uh, I'm using React. Obviously, React and React DOM, they're the same versions, 0.14.2. Okay, so let me close it for now. And then you would see timer.jsx that the file will be implementing next. But for now, let's include our libraries in the index.html. There are many ways to include React libraries. Downloading and pointing to the file from HTML is just one of the ways. Most likely in your projects you would want to use NPM or Bower and then uh, something like Browserify or Webpack to manage dependencies because you don't want to download all those files and uh, manually insert them. But for now, to keep things simple, stupid, let's just use this approach. Okay, so we have our two script includes. Now let's go to the body and add some placeholders where we will be rendering our React components. So what I want to do, I want to type div id equals timer dash app. So that's where our React component will render the timer application. This is not it. We also need to include the actual application, which I'm doing with the script tag again, just as I included the React libraries, and uh, I'm including timer.js. So we will be developing in JSX, but I'm actually including JS. That's important to notice. Okay, so let's save this file. So I open timer.jsx. If you don't have it, just create an empty file. And as always, I like to start with the last statement, which is react-dom.render. It basically tells me what I need to implement. So I'll be implementing time wrapper, which is an all-encompassing smart component. And I'll be injecting it into the timer-app container. So now let's implement the time wrapper. I'll be using react.create class. You should be already familiar with this method by now. Then I will set the get initial state. We'll set the state with this method. So this state will have the time property, which is null in the beginning. And then the interval, that's where I will be storing the reference to the timer, to the set interval object. Start timer, that's the function that will actually start the countdown. And I'll be passing time. That's the number of seconds. Clear interval will set the interval, remove the interval if we have any. That's a browser function, it's just a global method. And then the int or interval, that's the reference that I'll be saving in the state later. It equals set interval. It's another global method. And I'm just putting some console logs for us to know uh, where and what is actually happening. TL, it's a time left. So I'm using underscore this to transfer the proper reference. You can use that bind or you can use cell for that. And then I'm doing time minus one. So every time there is an interval and uh, the time will be 100, 1000 1, milliseconds, I will do TL minus one. 
and when TL is 0 I will clear the interval. And don't forget to set the state to the new time. And I'm console logging after set interval. Wonderful. So now I can actually return the state and set the state at the same time in the start timer. It's important because now we have that int saved into the state. Okay, and uh, the render function will have the buttons and the, the two other components. So first of all, div with the class name row fluid. That's a Twitter bootstrap class, just for proper layout. H2 timer, it's title timer. Now we have a group of buttons, so I would use three buttons, but I would not code them directly here. I would create another component, another React component called button with a, B, uh, with a capital B. And uh, what's interesting about it, I will be reusing the same component for three different buttons. Uh, they're different because they would have a different uh, time. One would have 5 seconds, another 10 seconds, and uh, the third one 15 seconds. But they all have this handler start timer, which we just implemented above. So different property time, but the same property start timer. And obviously the code for the button itself will be the same for all three buttons. But it will be smart enough to know uh, how much time to count down. And then the timer, that's uh, the display. It only has one property, uh, state.time. So basically we would show the time. And uh, the audio, that's uh, kind of a nice addition. So we will hear the sound once uh, the time is finished. And you would see how it's implemented in the timer and button. Okay, so now we need to implement button. The way we do it, we're again using react.create class. So this button takes two properties. One is time and one is start timer. So start timer, it's also a method in the button, don't get confused. We will call the handler from the property in this method. Just the same names. And we would be passing the prop time to the handler. This is how the time wrapper would know which button we click, like if it's 5 or 15 seconds. And then in the render, I'm using a type button and class name btn default. That's a Twitter bootstrap classes. They're just uh, making the button look nicer. And on click, I would use the start timer from the button not the property, because I need to pass that time as well. And uh, I'm outputting the time, obviously, this dot props dot time, and then adding seconds. One last element, one last component we need to implement, it's the timer. It's very simple. It will output the number of seconds left, and each time the state in timer wrapper changes, this render will be updated. And uh, when it's null, the sound will, uh, will beep. Basically, the timer will have an alarm. So we check in for when time is zero. And when it's zero, we're using some uh, document selectors like get element by ID dot play. That's HTML5 syntax html5 method for the audio tag it will start playing that sound if the time is null and uh, or it's zero we don't want to show anything just an empty div otherwise show h1 and then we use uh, curly braces to output the variable this dot props dot time closing everything now let me save this file. So it looks pretty good. So we have a render, 
time wrapper and then we're using a button and timer in the time wrapper. So now it's time to go and compile the file. Let's use uh, Babel. I just need to change the folders. And then you don't need to watch it. Dash W is for watching the file. That's because it's called timer, not script. Okay, so I'm going to the editor and you see the timer changed to the yellow. That means uh, the Babel re overrode that existing file. Okay, so just a brief glance, it looks good. So I'm going, launching the static web server. So I open the timer project in the browser and uh, let's say you click five seconds. I see the countdown and then I hear the sound. Then let's say I hit 10 seconds, but I changed my mind. I want it to be 15 seconds. It starts over. Oh, maybe five seconds starts over again. So if you actually change it to uh, maybe five minutes or uh, 15 minutes, uh, you could actually use it for meditation or maybe even for brewing coffee or cooking. That's it for this project. Thank you for watching.